I believe, and others I think are starting to believe, that we're actually looking at some kind of an accelerated melting. Because for one thing, the conventional explanations for this giant lake do not ever explain how that lake got there. Missoula. So, so this is Montana? Yeah. Here we go. This would have been showing graphically kind of the configuration of the ice at the late glacial maximum. This would have been about 16 to 20,000 years ago. Here you can see the two ice sheets, the Cordilleran and the Laurentide. And this, this is the area where the uh, ice-free corridor would have been. This box right here shows the area of the Missoula floods, they're called. This would have been Lake Missoula, and this would have been all of the area that we were just looking at where it's eroded. All that water would have come down, flowed through the Columbia Gorge here. This Portland is right here, would have turned north, and right here at Astoria, it would have drained into the Pacific Ocean. This is basic configuration, because J. Harlan Bretz, who was the geologist who first theorized this. He was considered a crackpot because he was talking about giant floods back in the 1920s and 30s, but of course he was proven right and ended up being the recipient of the Penrose Medal in his 90s. So he was the first one to speculate? Yeah. And yeah. what was his reasoning? Like, where, where did he see the evidence for the for some sort of a flooding? He was doing research along the Columbia River and he kept seeing evidence like these gigantic gravel bars and boulders and things that seemed out of place. This new topographic map came out in 1910, and he was regularly getting maps. He loved to look at maps. And he was looking at this feature, and he said, what the hell is the explanation for this? And this is what started him on this quest, this thing right here. It's called Potholes Cataract. And Potholes Cataract is a giant erosional feature to the edge of the basalt plateau. And the water came from the right. That is a result of what's called colking. When the water gets so turbulent that it's doing this like a tornado, and it literally can drill into the rock in a matter of days, it can drill. And what you see here is the evidence of gigantic turbulence and this is called a recessional cataract. Can so as the water pours over this, and at the time the spigots, the flood spigots are turned off, you're now left with this fossil feature.